startup entrepreneurs, business executives, investors, students, volunteers, everybody. Uh, in a world where there are so many, so much bad news, I am bringing you good news today. I will talk about one of the biggest problems we all face, and I think I have a solution. And in a way, the solution is you. The solution to the biggest problems in the world is always in people working together. Today, whatever you do, the essence of what you are working on professionally is stored in a computer, it is data, and all, all your business value is based on data, which means that if you have a data breach, your business may go down. You may be an Equifax that doesn't fix its vulnerabilities, or you may be a startup, you may, may be a government agency. If you, have, if you suffer a data breach, you may go down completely, or you may lose your job, or you may lose a lot of your, the value of the company. But there are, there are people who are ready to help you. There are lots of them. The thing is, we worry that we have to fear them. There are cyber criminals out there that we see as aliens coming to us, attacking us in ways we have never seen before. We don't know how to react. We don't know how to respond. We've been building security products for decades, and it doesn't help. Secure, the security industry today, the cybersecurity industry, is the new marketing. Half of the money is misspent. We just don't know which half. <clears throat> So we fear those who come and hack our systems criminally, the cyber criminals. But maybe it's just the media playing with us. Maybe we should just be entertained by them, because they are very few. And in reality, it's the media and the press and the movies who like to highlight the villains. And even one villain can give rise to hundreds or thousands of stories, and we fear the enemy as if, if it were a large or big enemy, when in reality, it's a very small group. Because for every bad guy there is out there, there are three orders of magnitude more good guys. For every cyber criminal, there's a thousand times more white hat hackers who are ready to hack you before the criminals hack you. And in an odd twist, it's true that if you are going to be hacked anyhow, better to be hacked by somebody you can trust. Because they will tell you what went wrong and you can fix it. And here you see a list of the best hackers in the world. Mark Litchfield, a uh, Scotsman living in uh, Las Vegas, he hacks for he has his main profession. Uh, Geek Boy, that's Sandeep Singh in Mumbai, one of the best hackers in the world. Uh, Franz Hussein, famous Swedish hacker who was on stage here last year, and tried to hack that Santiago in a guy named Santiago in Buenos Aires. These are amazing white hat hackers who operate on the HackerOne platform, helping companies find their vulnerabilities before the criminals find them. And these may be the top four, but we have over 100,000 white hat hackers, ethical hackers, security researchers signed up, volunteers who are doing this as a side hobby, hobby, as their main profession, as a side job to a security job they are doing. And what they do is they hack you for your benefit. But only if you invite them. That's the difference. A criminal will always hack you, whether you invite them or not. The white hats will hack you if you ask them to hack you. This has become so important that the Deputy Attorney General of the United States of America, using very complex words, but said everybody should turn to white hat hackers and help them make them more secure. The practice is called vulnerability disclosure policy, because in the security business we tend to come up with very complex terminology. But what it means is a company will say, if you see something, say something. If you find a flaw in our software, tell us and we will fix it. And this is exactly what Equifax did not do. They did not have a program for this. They were aware of the vulnerability, but they didn't fix it. 
And unfortunately, no matter how smart we are, if there is software, there are holes in the software. And we must fix them quickly, because the criminals will absolutely find them. And when they break in, they steal your data, and it's a data breach, and you suffer the consequences, which are legal, business, reputation, and so on. We were lucky to be chosen a year ago by the US Department of Defense to go and hack them. So we took the best hackers we found, 1,410 of them, vetted, known, scored, best hackers in the world, and we started hacking the Pentagon systems. It took us 13 minutes to find a way into the Pentagon, and we found a total of 138 holes in their systems. So this is the United States Department of Defense, arguably the most powerful organization in the world. They have every conceivable weapon. They have nuclear weapons. They have everything. They have unlimited budgets. They can hire any cybersecurity expert they need. Yet, they cannot find their own software vulnerabilities. Because we all have this blockage. You don't find your own typos. So people don't find their own flaws. But when you ask people around you to tell you, they will know. It's like a neighborhood watch where others who, are not, who have no bias towards you, they have much more curiosity and creativity, and they will actually find them. So this we did for the Pentagon, but we do it for companies of all sizes. We have startups running on this program. We have big internet companies like Slack, Snapchat, Twitter, Yahoo, Lyft, Uber, Dropbox, and so on, who are more secure because we find the vulnerabilities before they find them. <clears throat> and who are we? Like I said, it's 100,000 hackers signed up all over the world. Women and men, mostly men, uh, but we're trying to change that. Young and old, formally educated, self-taught, all over the world. They are in Karachi, Dhaka, Mumbai, Bangalore, Buenos Aires, all over the world. Young, fantastic people, most of them young, who have learned and grew up with computers, and they can figure out how to break into your systems. And they have the best of intentions. They are trying to create a career for themselves. They want to do good. They have figured out how to break into any computer system there are. And we always break in. Within 24 hours, we always find a hole in any software presented to us. So this community is growing very fast. Two years ago, it was around 16,000. Now it's well over 100,000. We believe it will be over a million hackers and ethical, ethical hackers and security researchers in a few years. And this is actually what we are seeing at Slush as well, the power of collaboration. When you bring together people who work in a voluntary fashion for a common cause, that's when you can create, create amazing results. And here we have a way of paying them as well. Because when they find a vulnerability in your system, you pay them a bounty, a reward for the find, which means that these are paid only on results. All the other security solutions and products that you buy, firewalls and antivirus and whatnot, you pay whether it's working or not. Here you pay only when it functions. And by the end of 2020, so three years from now, we will have paid out over $100 million in rewards to hackers all over the world. This will save companies tens of billions in, in damages and losses that they are not suffering as a result. But not only that, if you give out $100 million to the most well-meaning, smart, driven, self-motivated, curious people on the planet. You create a whole new profession. You create a whole new movement. These are people who have no particular background. It's not that they grew up with a silver spoon in their hand. They are anywhere in the world. Many times, they are a little bit misfits or misunderstood by their environment. But by allowing them to do good and be paid for it, it's nearly like the scout movement over and over again, where you do a good deed every day, and you let them self-organize, and you let them build the community, and you create enormous value for the customers, but you also give them meaning in life. Because the problem we have on this planet is that with 7 billion people, 
Many people don't know why they exist. And when people don't know why they exist, they start arguing with, with each other. And when they start arguing, soon they have a gun in their hand and it, and the, it gets really bad. So when you give them something useful to do, you create a much better world. And it's actually a bigger topic than just cybersecurity. We are here applying the, the idea of collaboration and barn racing to security. But this was done 15 years ago in software when the open source movement started, or it started uh, longer ago, but with the big open source projects where people came together, built something passionately together, and it outperformed and still today outperforms any other software. Open source software is more powerful than closed source software. Uh, collaborative cybersecurity is much more powerful than any other security uh, offering. And if you are a startup entrepreneur, you should think about how you can take the power of a community to turn it into something much bigger than any challenge in the world. It is when we work together that we can accomplish things that nobody else could have imagined. And Slush is like that. Slush is a voluntary organization. 2,000 people are organizing this amazing event uh, just for the fun of it, because they are passionate, because they want to make a change, they want to make a difference in life, and it creates something that nobody, no corporation, no government, no company could ever have done on their own. But when you pool your resources, you can overcome any obstacle. And that, I believe, is the, tr the key to the future in this society, when we're now seeing so much problem, so much isolationism, and we actually should do the opposite. We should do work more together because we can solve every possible problem by working together. We are solving the problem of cybersecurity, but you can solve any problem with this method. Thank you.